a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. We're going to do something a little different with our ETF segment this time around. We're going to talk about ETFs and how they've been behaving in light of this big market route that we've seen here for uh, since August the 24th, as a matter of fact. Nina Mishra, our ETF research director, has done some work in this area. She's joining me now to fill us in on ETF behavior in light of this uh, market slide that we've been witnessing. It's been kind of frantic even in the ETF sector. Yeah, it was a very volatile week in the last week. And Monday in particular saw some crazy trading in stocks and in ETFs. Uh, Monday, August the 24th. Yes. Okay. Yes. And though markets have stabilized somewhat since then. Yeah, they've been I, back and forth. Yes. But I think it makes sense to take a look at what happened. Okay. Uh, because I think those that chaotic market and those chaotic market conditions reflected some of the flaws in trading architecture. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. So at market open on Monday, uh, many stocks declined sharply. Right. But ETFs, many ETFs were down by about 20% and some were down almost 30, 40, 45%. And uh, while ETFs were down significantly, the stocks, underlying stocks, mm -hmm. were not down so much. So that means, in other words, we can say that ETFs were trading significantly below their net asset values. Okay. Uh, you know, an ETF is just a basket of securities. Yep. So under normal market conditions, uh, the ETF price is really close to the total value of those securities. That is called the fair price of the ETF. Mm -hmm. But that day, ETFs were trading significantly below their uh, net asset values. And this happened not, not only in some of the smaller ETFs, uh, some of the very big and very popular ETFs also declined significantly. So and the importance here is that everybody should realize ETFs are not insulated from this type of activity. Yes, if the market behaves crazy, ETFs will not also remain insulated from those chaotic market conditions. Mm -hmm. And the thing to note here is that uh, none of the trades executed that day, especially in the morning, were canceled. Even though uh, those chaotic market conditions lasted only for some time, and by the, uh, you know, by market end, most ETFs were trading near their net asset values. Okay. And, uh, so the trading, so there were trading halts yes. in ETFs as well as individual issues. As well, yeah, uh, trading halts in ETFs as well as in stocks because yeah. of circuit breakers which were applied by the exchanges. Right. And uh, I have uh, some charts here. I've taken these from the journal and uh, these basically show chaotic trading that particular morning. Mm -hmm. So this particular chart uh, shows number of times trading for a security was paused or halted on August 24th. So and nearly 80% of trading halls were in ETFs. Interesting. By journal you're talking about obviously the Wall Street Journal. Yes, yes. where this chart came from. Mm -hmm. And then on the next chart I have number of trading halls during the month of August. Mm -hmm. So you can see that on 24th, uh, the, the number was almost 40 times the daily average. It's interesting. And so to illustrate this, you've uh, chosen the Vanguard Consumer Staples Index ETF. Yes, and that's, that's a very popular, it's a big popular ETF. And uh, this is an example of trading halls in a single ETF. This ETF was halted six time in the first 37 minutes of market open. Of trading that day. Yes, and 88 ETFs in all had eight or more trading halls in the morning. So, so ETFs were trading like for 30 seconds and then the circuit breaker was hit and they were, the trading was halted for five minutes, then they again traded for a minute and then the, again the trading was halted. It was totally crazy. So putting, putting that Monday in perspective, everything that happened that day. You've got some bullet points that just kind of overview that. Yes, I think it was a combination of factors, a number of factors. First of all, this Rule 48 was invoked by the NYSE. Mm -hmm. uh, in simple word, it means that uh, designated market makers did not have to uh, indicate their prices before 
market open on that particular day. And it was basically intended to uh, ensure an early and orderly trading or trading open. Then, as we discussed, there were almost 1,300 suspensions of stocks and ETFs. Mm -hmm. More than 80% of those were in ETFs. Then, uh, while uh, NYSC did not, some, some stocks uh, on the NYSC did not trade for uh, 10 minutes that morning. Uh, ETFs on BATS and NASDAQ exchanges were trading. So ETFs were trading while some of the underlying stocks were not, were not. trading. So what happened that these market makers or authorized participants in ETFs, uh, they basically ensure that ETFs trade close to their fair values or uh, net asset values, and that they ensure through arbitrage mechanism. Mm -hmm. So these market makers had a difficulty in arriving the fair value of the securities because prices were not available, then trading was being halted. So they did not want to take a lot of risk. So either they stayed away from the market for some time or they uh, had their prices with very wide bidders spread. That's interesting. Yes, and that is why uh, some we saw some of those crazy prices that day. Yeah. Unfortunately, some investors were hit. They, if they had market orders, they were hit, and their orders were executed at worst possible prices because none of the trades executed that day were cancelled. So, because the market's been bouncing up and down since the 24th, has ETF trading returned to some normalcy now? Uh, they have. We don't see those kind of wild prices now. <laughs> okay, and we are sitting here talking about this on September the 2nd. Yes. So normalcy as of as this of conversation. <laughs> yes. So based on everything you've just said, what is the takeaway for investors? I think there are some important takeaways. First of all, when the market is volatile and conditions are chaotic, then think first and act later. Do not try to sell and then think Later, and that applies to, to stocks as well as to ETFs. Mm -hmm. Then stay focused on your longer term investing goals. ETFs in particular are mostly used by investors for their longer term asset allocation purposes, except for those, you know, inverse and leverage ETFs, which are used for market timing and hedging. But most, most of the popular ETFs are uh, used by longer term investors. So stay focused on your longer term investing goals. Don't try to act irrationally during market chaos. And I think the most important takeaway is that please, please, please don't use market orders in chaotic market conditions because you don't know your order may get hit at the worst possible price. Yeah, if it gets filled at all. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, well, thanks for all of that information. And as a point of clarification, do you own that Vanguard ETF? No, I don't. All right. So if you want to check out more information on ETFs, go to the ETF section of Zax.com. Easy for me to say. All you need to do to get there is go to the home page of Zax.com, use the top toolbar, and use the funds tab in that top toolbar. It'll take you right to it. Also, a reminder, if you're watching our videos on YouTube, you can subscribe to them there and even comment on them. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.